Good day, students. So we will continue with our lecture series. This is Unit 2, and packaging the self. Okay. So for this particular chapter or particular unit, we will be discussing the six aspects of the self. Let's start with, so we'll start with the physical self, the sexual self, the material or economic self, the spiritual self, the political self, and lastly, the digital self. Okay, so the physical self. Learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. That's according to Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, so when we talk about the physical self, sometimes when we look at the mirror, we look at our reflection, and some of us would say, I am not who I think I am just because of our physical appearance. We would say, I am not who you think I am just because of what we see. I, I am who I think you think I am. So meaning our definition of our physical self depends upon how others would tend to see it. Remember Cooley's idea of looking glass self? Okay, so as we focus on the physical self, this would be a tangible, concrete dimension of who we are. We could readily observe this. We could readily examine this. Sometimes it's the basis of who we are. Okay, so the physical self or the body is the initial source of sensation and necessary for the origin and maintenance of personality. So according to William James, mostly who we are reflects the behavior, reflects the physical manifestation of who we are or the self. Okay, so as we look into this one, like what I've said, looking glass self by Cooley, sometimes our perception of ourselves is different from the perception of others and how others view themselves too. Okay, so there are different perceptions. So why are we so much focused on the self? Because according to sociology, Brian Turner coined the term somatic society which means the newfound importance of the body is in this contemporary self. So usually we focus all our attention, the improvement of who we are in our body. Okay, so let's try to see some of the obsessions of beautiful faces and body. So one of my fave musicians would be Michael Jackson, but he is also one of the most prominent individuals to look at when we talk about evolution of the physical self. So you would see here from 1956, you could readily observe the color of his skin keeps on changing, even the nose bridges, the eyes, the different attributes in his face keeps on changing. Okay. And then nowadays, if when we talk about people, advertisement, we always look into fair. We look up, we would like to become whiter. That's why we have the term whitewash or napaka fair. Okay. Another thing on how society view ourselves, our obsession about the self would be some of the different eating disorders, like bulimia nervosa and anorexia nervosa. So for bulimia nervosa, this would be an individual who would eat. He keeps on eating or she keeps on eating until such time she realizes that she's gaining weight. So in order to reduce the weight, what will she do? She would induce vomiting. Okay, that would be bulimia nervosa. Bulimia, uh, anorexia, uh, anorexia nervosa would be another thing naman. For anorexia nervosa, they do not eat. So that's the difference. Anorexia nervosa, do not eat. Bulimia nervosa, they would eat. Sometimes it becomes obsessive that they would tend to eat as much as they can. And then they realize that they're get, getting fat. That's why they would have to induce vomiting in order to reduce their weight gain, which is very harmful for the individual. Okay. Or now we have here, let me just move. The demand for cosmetic surgery, especially those which are in low cost, 
yung bagsak presyong turo. That sometimes it really changed the way we look and it could be harmful to our body. Gluta, when we talk about an individual who is fair, like in my case, but I do not take gluta, still people would say, ah, nagugluta ka kaya medyo maganda ka or maganda yung skin mo. Okay. So those are the things that are happening in our society. Why? And another important thing that is happening to society because our focus would be our body would be another mental disorder, which is the body dysmorphic disorder. In body dysmorphic disorder, a person, when she or he sees his reflection in the mirror, she would always or he would always see some fault. Okay. They could not see and appreciate who they are, but instead they keep on finding fault. My eyelids is too squinchy. My nose is too flat. My teeth is too small. Those different um, defects that they see every time they look at the mirror. Okay. So even in social media, we have body shaming. Whether you're fat, whether you're thin, whether you are well built, so, maayos naman yung pangatawan. Still, we are shaming them. You're too fat. You're too small. You're too big. You're too large. You're too muscular. But let me quote Shamsi Sutsot, one of our beauty queens in the country, wherein she said, the standard of beauty is not definite. We define it. So, we try to define what is beautiful. By doing this, we are able to take care of our physical body okay so the first question so the first question here is so for the different questions kindly place your answers in the uh, comment section of this particular announcement okay so question number one what is your ideal physique of a man and a woman since this will not be online and this will not be impromptu, maybe you could get some pictures or maybe you could just describe it. So just tell us what would be the ideal physique of a man and a woman. Okay, next. So we go now. So as we look into the physical self, let's not forget, aside from what Shamsi Subsub had said, let's not forget that being beautiful means being healthy. So here would be a certain logo. Feel free if you want to add more. Try to add your tagline here, health and beauty, so that it could be a mantra, a statement that you keep on repeating so that it could be something that could help you not focus on your physical defects or the things that you do not like about your physical appearance. It could be empowering too. Okay, so... Health and beauty, you could add your tagline. You could also place it in the comment, okay? So another thing that you have to remember about the physical self is our standard of beauty depends upon the, the person who judge beauty. So beauty is in the eye of the beholder. As we look at this, at, look at this females here, individuals here, if we look at them and try to appreciate the cultural relevance of their beauty, then we would say they are beautiful. So it depends upon our own assessment of what is beautiful. Let's not try to be with what is in demand, what is the bandwagon, what is the click, what is, what is popular at the moment. We try to define beauty. Okay. So Here's a mantra, another mantra. We are not our bodies. We live in our bodies, but our bodies do not make who we are. Okay. So asking mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, would be futile. Walang patutunguhan yan. Because everyone is beautiful depending upon their different assessments. Okay. So hopefully, when we talk about ourselves, when we talk about our physical selves, though we have that particular standard of what is beautiful, please remember, we define what is beauty first. Second, beauty is equivalent to being healthy. Third, this would be, we are not our body. It is just part of who we are. 
our beauty, our body do not define who we are. Okay. So the last one, uh, the second one would be my sexual self. Okay. So for this, sex, my sexual self, first question is, so in the chat box, you could place question or activity number two, then your answer, write down your own definition of sex, sexuality, and then gender. Okay. So what is sex? Sex is commonly defined as something which is biological. So when we talk about biological, it pertains to the male and female, or it could deal with the sexual activity, the reproductive activity. So usually when we talk about sex, this is a person's identity assigned to him at birth. So for females, that would be the vagina. For males or men, that would be the penis or the chromosomes that are assigned to us. The XX chromosome would be for females, and the XY chromosome would be for males. Okay, next, gender. So gender is the structure of the social relationships that centers on the reproductive area, arena, and the set of practices that brings reproductive dis distinction into the social process. So the term also refers to the social, cultural distinction associated with a given sex. It is generally considered to be socially constructed concept. So when we talk about gender, it means the role assigned to you. If you act like a female, then that's a feminine behavior. If you act like a male, then that is a masculine behavior. Okay. So it's more of a social connotation. The society defines what is being a male, what is being a female. Later on, we'll look into the androgynous part okay sexuality sexuality is about who you are attracted to sexually or romantically usually when we talk about sexuality the idea of attraction the idea of interest the idea of having relationship it could be an erotic experience or responses to this one. okay so these are the distinction and definition so if our usually in the survey they would say sex that will deal with the biological makeup of an individual. Sex gender would tell us that if you're born male, then your sex would be male. If you have the male reproductive system, the sex would be male. Okay. If you're a transgender, transgender woman, then you are born male. Sex is male, but your gender may be feminine. Okay, so those are some of the distinction. And then you may be heterosexual, meaning if I'm a girl, I'm attracted to a male. Homosexual, if I'm a girl, I'm attracted to a female. We'll discuss all those things. Those things. However, when we talk about sexuality, it is just merely defining like what is defined a while ago. Attraction, interest, having relationship. It's more than that. Sexuality nowadays could em encompass all of the different aspects of who we are. Like for example, sexuality could also deal with how we express our sexuality through our body, the clothes that we wear, the actions that we do, thoughts and feelings, gender relationship, and the values that we have. Okay. So usually when we talk about sexuality, we focus on the LGBTQA+. Okay. So uh, L, meaning lesbian, G, gay, B, bisexual, T, transsexual, can be a male or a female, Q, queer, we do not know, and A plus, associate or those who support the LGBTQ. Okay, so hopefully this is clear to everyone. So if you are heterosexual, we're talking about sexuality now, heterosexual, you are attracted to someone of the opposite sex. If you're a lesbian, this is particularly connoting female attraction to another female. If you're gay, it connotes male attraction to another male. If it would be bisexual, then you're attracted to both male and female. Pansexual would mean you're attracted not only to male and female, man or woman. You could also be attracted to someone who is, who has, who is defined 
to be transgender or queer. Okay, pansexual, like pandemic, meaning it encompasses a great deal of sexuality. Transsexual will mean don't identify with the gender assigned at birth. Usually, when we talk about transsexual woman or transsexual man, um, a good example for this one, we have a lot of examples of this one. Like, for example, uh, Isa Siguera will also have gyrus, formerly known as cheris. So those are transsexual, transsexual men. Okay, so they had gender reassignment. Okay, now when we say cisgender, this means your gender and sexual orientation depends upon the biological sex that you have. Okay, so those are some clarifications that hopefully you are aware of now and you try to see. So why are we defining those different terms? Actually, when we talk about LGBTQ, sexuality, this is very extreme, meaning the spectrum is too large that hardly from time to time there would be a new category. Dati nga, heterosexual, homosexual lang. Ngayon, mas marami pa yan. Kaya nga may plus na sila. So, why are we focusing on this one? Because my advocacy for sexual, uh, the sexual self is that we do not only look at equality, sexual uh, gender equality. Usually, we say gender equality, that women should always be treated like how we treat men. But instead, let's now focus and change our perspective to equity. So what do we mean by, the, uh, what's the difference between equity and equality? So here, gender inequality would mean you do not treat people equally because of their sex or their gender. Usually, this at the, at the side we're in mostly abuse would be the females. So for example, in our home, there's always the assigned task for females, that females are the ones to wash the dishes, care for the children. Men could also do that. If we advocate equality, the mother and the father should share the same amount of responsibility. The mother will not be the only one trying to take care of the child because that is the role assigned to them. That's not equality. That is inequality. Okay, gets niyo? So equal footing sila. However, what I would like you to learn from this discussion is that instead of looking at equality, let's look at equity, which means that we try to give people, judge people in their equal food, uh, not in their equal footing, but the most advantageous for them. For example, in the classroom, in the school, in terms of recitation, since boys have lower and louder voices, boys, the guys, have lower and louder voices, immediately the teacher would focus on them. Gets? Nakikita ninyo? So that means the girls do not have equal footing because of the loudness of the voice. But if we do not look at the loudness of the voice, instead, we look at maybe the first one to raise the hand, then you're giving them equal opportunity or equality in order to cope with, for example, who would be the first one to recite. Okay. So equality would mean, like in this uh, particular drawing, uh, sana ba yan? so here, so equality would mean if we will treat them in equity, the person with a shorter height should be given a higher platform so that they could compete at equal footing. That it gets? In equality, we give them the same footing. We give them the same opportunity. But things like that do not really happen in our society because there are characteristics within ourselves that makes us advantageous for a certain opportunity or disadvantageous for a certain opportunity. For example, here in the school, uh, let's go back to the illustration again. Here in the school, we all know that uh, socioeconomic status 
would give inequality among students. Yung pagiging mahirap, pagiging mayaman, or yung sakto lang na income ng parents, nagkakaroon yon ng inequality. So pag sinabi nating gender equality or equality in the classroom in terms of socioeconomic status, you'll just treat them as individuals with the same, with the same, for example, the same income. That their parents would have the same income. That's equality. But if we say equity, for example, since rich individuals could afford, nagigets niya, could afford, uh, for example, um, some gadgets like laptop, good laptop, cell phones, and then iPad or tablet, then that would be advantageous for them in terms of learning because the individual, the student who comes from a poor family may not have the same pare-parehas, the same opportunity. Wala silang pambayad ng laptop. Wala silang pambayad pambili na cell phone. So we would not look and give education at the same avenue for these two individuals. One with higher social economic status and one with lower social economic status. So what would be the equity that we could provide for them? So huwag din natin discriminate yung mayaman. Give them opportunities to, for example, sa mga mayayaman, give them opportunities for, like this, online, synchronous or asynchronous learning. Yung mga nasa mas mababa walang gadget. We give them the same opportunity but looking at their potential, looking at their resources. So wag mong bibigyan ng activity na online. Bigyan mo ng activity na kaya niyang mag-excel like modular. So they are now at equal footing. Okay, nakikets ninyo? Even for example, in hiring, try to, uh, to apply for a job. Usually, they no longer put their Preferably males. Dina. Why? Because that's not an equal opportunity. Okay, clear. That's not an equal opportunity. So, next. So, biological perspective of sex. So, we will be looking at sex. So, we have here, so I guess you are familiar with, if you will become a daughter, a female, you have the XX chromosome. For the males, the sun, we have that XY chromosome. So why did that happen? Usually because of the cross-pollination of the sperm to the egg. Okay. So this is basic biology. Now, for the human reproductive system, though for understanding the self, they focus on reproductive system, sexual drive, sexual phases. I feel that this is not the proper venue because I could not see your reaction. Neither could I correct your reaction later on, but we'll just discuss this in passing. So hopefully everyone knew about the male sex organ, the female sex organ. Okay, so those are things. And then when we talk about sexuality, the sexual act, so there are different phases. You have the preparatory, refractory, and the resolution phase. So usually in a sexual relationship, when you start kissing, that would be the preparatory. Okay. Uh, for this one, we, like what I've said, I could not discuss this very well unless I see your reaction. I might give you different connotation for this one. Okay. Especially that um, I'm not an advocate of reproductive health. Your parents should be the one to educate you regarding sexual activities. Anyways, what I would like you to remember is that whatever sexual activity you are experiencing or you will be experiencing or excited to experience in the future, just remember, it should be your own decision. It should be your own responsibility. It should be your own time and your, it should be something which is voluntary so that you will enjoy the sexual activity. Next. So now, after the sexual activity, question number three. So kindly write in the um, reply section of this conversation, what is the difference? Maybe you could write the difference among the terms love, lust, and attraction. 
Okay. So we would focus on the differences of these different, different terms by looking at two concepts. The first one would be the triangle of love, according to Robert Sternberg, and the chemical composition of our body. Okay. So let's try to see. Let's start with Robert Sternberg, the professor in love that we often see. So for Robert Sternberg, he said that love is composed of three things. The first one is intimacy. Second one would be passion. Third one would be cognitive. When a commitment. So when we say uh, commitment, this is the cognitive aspect meaning this is the decision to stay in the relationship. Be clear. Hindi lang basta sinabi, oh, tayo na, but maybe you say, uh, you do not merely say, tayo na, but instead, it's a decision to like the person and stay in the relationship. Intimacy would deal with you like the person and you communicate your thoughts to that person, meaning you share who you are. We often say to our students, especially when we were teaching general psychology or psychology classes, we often say that you have to discover more. You have to discover muna who you are before you share who you are to another person. Because in a relationship, it, it, if it is a serious one, you do not merely hold hands, keys, pecking, necking. That's not the totality of it. But instead, Robert Sternberg would tell us that there would be some ways of communication, some ways of liking, some ways of trying to create a relationship because of a positive feeling. That is intimacy, and it is created through communication. Okay. Passion would be the chemical part, the motivational part of love, according to Robert Sternberg. Passion would be the urge to be with, the excitement to be with that special individual that you will blush every time you see that person, your heart palpitates every time you see that individual. That's passion. Okay, clear. So in order to understand love, attraction, as well as lust, Robert Sternberg said that the feelings that we have, the relationship that we engage to, could be a combination of one or more of these different aspects. So if you only have, for example, intimacy, you just like the person. There's no commitment to stay in the relationship. There's no spark. Light lang yun. If it will be, so liking. If it will be passion only, then it will be infatuation. Actually, this is attraction. So if there would be an attraction, meaning you like the person because he makes you excited. It makes you feel alive. That's infatuation. If it would be commitment, you just stay in the relationship because you're already married, then that's empty. Love. If you combine intimacy and commitment, then you have companionate love. You, usually, we see this among friends. This is the kind of love, a romantic relationship among friends. They grew old, they like one another, and they're committed in the relationship. If you only have, for example, Passion and commitment that will deal with the romantic uh, passion and commitment. Wait, huh? Parang wala ako. So if you only have passion and commitment, that would be fatuous love. When we say fatuous love, um, this is what we call the shotgun wedding, meaning boy girl meets one day, boy girl like one another, they become couple. Third day, they are already engaged. Fourth day, they are already married. Parang yung kanta ni Imelda Papin, isang linggong pag-ibig. Okay, that's how fast the relationship starts and end because it will end uh, disastrously. Okay, next. If you combine passion and intimacy only, that would be the romantic love. There is the liking of the person. There is the chemistry within that individual. But why is it something which is not a perfect triangle of love because you lack commitment. You may feel love, but then the idea of staying longer in the relationship is not present. So according to Robert Sternberg, I am him that, we should aim for a consummate love wherein all of the different aspects are present. So if it only, it's only passion, that could be attraction or that could be lust. 
if it will be all the three components, then that could be yeah. Okay. Another one is let's get chemical. Okay. Last attraction and attachment depends upon the chemicals released in the body. Okay. Let's go one after the other. Okay. So if it would be last, last time. Huh? So it if it will be last, then it would be the different reproductive system that will release the chemicals, namely the estrogen and testosterone for females, uh, for males, testosterone for males. So that would be for last. But if it will be attraction, it would be your brain that will tell you that seeing someone you like, the hypothalamus would release dop dopamine that will feel you elevated, your emotion is elevated, okay? Another one would be if it would be attachment or for some, a love for a love for someone, someone that you know, it would be the hypothalamus still, but it will release oxytocin and vasopressin. Okay, so let's try to discuss each one after the other. Okay, usually then because of too much dopamine, a person may become abusive in the relationship jealous may have some um all would tend to cheat on their partner okay so sabi nga dito sakta lang dapat yung amount ng dopamine at oxytocin okay so let's start so the part of the brain that is involved when we are in love is the pre prefrontal cortex so the prefrontal cortex located near the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland would tell to signal the body to release oxytocin and vaso vasopressin. Okay. However, if it will be last, the hypothalamus of the brain plays a big role in this, stimulating the production of sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Okay. If it will be attraction, while we are certainly, or we, cert we can certainly last for someone we are attracted to or vice versa, one can happen without the other. So you may be attracted, but you may not experience last. Okay, so attraction, according to a study of the psychologist for chemistry of love is that attraction happens when the brain signals to release, to release dopamine as a reward system. Sometimes if we see, for example, our faith, um, actor and we really like it we feel happy why because seeing someone beautiful would signal the body that you're receiving a reward and it will release dopamine okay like it gets in you or it could release nor adrenaline that's why when people attend concerts of their favorite band or their favorite groups they feel very energetic that sometimes even though they are very tired, they could not feel the tired state. Okay, so those would be attraction. Whereas for attachment, usually it could be found in a relationship, long-term relationship, or sometimes between mother and newborn child. Okay, it will release what we call as oxytocin and vasopressin. Okay, so this will deal with you feel comfortable with the individual. You feel at ease with the individual. Okay. I believe this is the feeling that mothers have when they cuddle their small child and they breastfeed them. The feeling of contentment, the excitement. It is brought about by the um, different chemicals in our body, the oxytocin and vasopressin. Okay. So hopefully, no question. Next, we go to the material self. Shaping the way we see ourselves would be the role of consumer culture on our sense of self and identity. Okay, so according to William James, a man's sense, a man's self is the sum total of all that he can call his, not only his body and his psyche powers, but his clothes and his house, his wife and children, his ancestors and friends, his reputation and works, his lands and horses, and yacht and bank account. All these things give him the same emotion. If they wax and prosper, 
he feels triumph. If they dwindle, dwindle and die away, he feels cast away. Not necessarily in the same degree for each thing, but in this in much in much the same way for all. So meaning our possession sometimes define who we are. Okay. So maybe you could do this. Just imagine you will choose five objects that you will you will so the premise here is you'll go to a supermarket, a grocery store, or a mall. And then you only have to select five objects that you will place in your grocery bag. What are those objects? So you kindly write them in the comment section. So what are the objects that you have selected? Why did you choose this object? What are the connection of these objects to yourself? If you will be asked to let go of these objects and retain one, which object would you choose and why? So maybe if you would find it very helpful for you, you could do this particular task or question. Okay, so the material self it refers to the tangible objects, people, or places that carry designation. Designation called my or my. Okay, so it's more of a possession. Okay, so you have your bodily body, a bodily self, and its extension would be all the material self. It could be the house that you have or your parents or the possession, the automobile that you have. Sometimes material self, though it could deal with social relationship, but it's more of the properties, okay? So functions of our possession, things that we have, can go beyond the functional value. For example, if you have Gucci like, um, like Gucci Prada, like um, Heart Evangelista, it could influence people. Kaya nga, influencer, karamihan ang sabi natin dun sa mga YouTuber. Or it could hold power. It could hold sympathy. It could be a way to distinguish our social status. Or it could define our emotion. Okay. So our possession could influence these different things within us. Okay. Materialism would focus on how our possession, having something, could influence our attachment to this possession. Like for example, some people work very hard that they no longer sleep because of the money that they could get. Or some people could not go down from their pedestal because of the prestige that they have experienced or the admiration that they receive from other people. That is materialism. Okay. Can possession really buy happiness and stability? This is another question that you could place. Maybe you could place there a question number uh, three. No? Question number three. Okay. So usually in symbolic communication model, they say that one's possession becomes part of who we are. It becomes an extension of our bodily body that defines our self. Okay. So sometimes it could be it could ruin our image, our possession could ruin an image, or it could improve our image. Sometimes this possession could compensate something that a person lacks. Okay. So here are some examples. A recent PhD, for example, PhD student, may prominently display his diploma in an attempt to convince himself and others that he is the erudite scholar he aspired to be. So sometimes the possession of the diploma, that's the material self, define who he is. Most of us do that. Siyempre, for example, if you finish college, an extension of who you are would be your diploma. If you get an award, for example, you graduated cum laude, magna cum laude, it becomes an extension of who you are, a possession that has more than its functional value. So we also have here conspicuous consumption. Consumer own high price status-oriented goods to impress others and to convince them of their high social status. Though I am not into bashing Chinky uh, Pacquiao, but if you are familiar with her collection of Birkin bags, we would say that she deserves it. Deserve it. Manny Pacquiao gave it to her. 
But more than owning those bags, more than owning those million worth of bags, it becomes a status symbol that sometimes with that bag comes their power. They become influential. They can help change the thinking of other people. Uh, for example, hmm, let's try to see. Let me give you a very concrete example. Uh, for example, um, in my case, we studied in La Salle. In La Salle, we, you often see students using Apple-made items. Like, for example, MacBook. If you're new in La Salle and your laptop, the brand of your laptop would be Acer, Lenovo. It's not a status symbol. But if you go there and you have your MacBook, you become part of the group. So you would see how possession, consumption of a high price good becomes the status symbol of people. Why is it that? Have you ever asked the question, why is it that every time, every new year, companies, cell phone companies change the model of their phones? Back in? Because at the back of the mind of the consumer, if I buy the latest gadget, it becomes a status symbol. It becomes a higher value, a person with a higher value. That, was, that would be the conspicuous consumption. Okay. So usually what happens here is that the downside of having that possession would be acquisition of material possession. Then it becomes symbolic. It becomes part of your identity. Then you lost that possession. You lost an important aspect of yourself. Then you become depressed. Okay. This is quite sad, where especially if people become attached to their belongings. Okay. Possession as unstable, unstable meanings. So meanings is constantly changing. State of lack, sabihin pa bago-bago. Cultural categories of people that help shape identity are subject to constant manipulation by individuals, social groups, and marketing agents. Meanings of objects that are used to make visible and stabilize the categories of culture are also subject to frequent change through their appropriation in advertising, in television programming, and among social subgroups. I remember when TikTok was still the trend. Okay, Usually, um, when we talk about TikTok, if you use TikTok, you are in. But nowadays, TikTok is no longer just merely a status symbol. It's also a means to try to, def uh, try to communicate, educate people. That's a good thing about TikTok. But my point here is that the meaning of the possession, the meaning of the things that we have at the moment may change its value. Usually, it deteriorates. Okay, like it gets new. For example, you bought a certain bag which is in at the moment. Makaka-relate ba kayo? Oh, we, you bought a certain gadget, a cell phone, an Android phone, for example, which is in five to ten years ago. Na pag may Samsung cell phone ka, mayaman ka. Nagigets niyo? Tapos napalitan through advertisement ng Oppo. Pag Oppo naman ang meron ka, mas mayaman ka dun sa taong merong Samsung. Ngayon naman, though hindi nawawala ang value, if you have an iPhone, you have better status compared to those with Samsung or Oppo model of cell phones. So those could be things that can manipulate what we like. Okay, clear? Naintindihan? Okay. Even the add-to-cart phenomenon, sometimes, why is it that it's good to add to cart? Maglalagay ka ng items na hindi mo naman kailangan. Tapos, reality versus expectation, magkaiba dun sa nakita mo yung napili mo. Why? Why we do that? Because of advertisement. Television, social media tells us to buy these things even though we do not use it. Okay. So for example, a teenager who has just purchased his snowboard, the youthful extreme sports image of snowboarding may soon fade as more people over 40 take up the sports. 
So, nawawala yung pagiging novel niya, nawawala yung pagiging in. Okay. Sometimes, pets could be an extension or symbols of who we are. Sometimes, our pets became our companion and sometimes, in extreme cases, it becomes part and extension of who we are. Especially those who would like to buy very expensive breed of dogs and cats. For example, Persian cats, would they survive? Sa Pilipinas kasi ang, dag, ang pusa ay para sa mga daga. Nagkakaroon ka ng pusa para pang huli na daga. Not because of a status symptom. Maybe for America, this is applicable. Okay. So activity 4.B, a continuation of the first one. Let's go back to our activity earlier. Suppose you were given the chance to return the object and choose another thing in life that you can put inside your grocery bag. What things would you choose? So kung may papalitan ka dun sa limang napili mo, pwede ka magpalit. Ano na ngayon yung ipapalit mo? Okay. So the real, is it real for people? Is it real for, is it, is it for real that a person would find meaning and satisfaction in life if he or she has an expensive set of clothes, car, bag, awards, and fame? Okay. Let's be guided by this principle by Bertrand Russell. It is the preoccupation with possessions more than anything else that prevents us from living freely and long. Next would be part four, the self and the spiritual, pity and religion. So we have to define these three things. So religion is an organized system of ideas about spirituality, supernatural realm, and rituals. For us, spirituality is the aspect of divine, divine, and supernatural, but oftentimes limited to the individual. It need not to have a formal organization. Okay. The two are related, although not separated from one another. Spirituality is more profound than religion. So if I will ask you, are you more religious or a spiritual person? Why do you say so? Usually, when we talk about our religion, religion, since it is a formalized organization, there are rituals. There are different activities that we've done repeatedly during the calendar. Parang sa Roman Catholic, meron tayo yung liturgical calendar. Para sa mga Chinese Muslim, meron din silang calendar. Okay. So, there are different traditions that we experience. Examples of Catholic traditions would be fasting, healing, offering, panalangin walang patid, attending mass, pagnonobina, pagrerasario, senakolo. Okay. Why is this very important? Why are these different rituals very important to our sense of self and spirituality? Because it defines who we are. Okay. We also have here some Philippine mythology. Like, for example, spirituality would deal with hula. Still, they have that supreme being wherein they are guided. That's why they are able to make hula. Tawas, kulam, duende, diwata, things that we could not see but have influence to us. That's spirituality or some faith healing. Okay. So, here are some ethnic religious leaders. Sayang nga wala akong makita ang ano nung AEOO. So, Bailan Undin, Inagusan del Sur. Apong Benita of the Aitas, the male Babaylan or the Asu, or some culture, or some pilgrimage in Mount Banaha. So those are some religions. Okay. So how is old religion preserved and continued? When a leader would remain in power. While the spiritual leader remains the intercessor between the people and the divine, which is very important because they would be the mediator between the people and the supreme being. While there is living experiences of the divine who believe to be invisible but could not be rich. Okay. So Yabut, a professor in University of the Philippines, 
said that the meaning of spirituality among Filipinos would be a phenomenological experience, meaning it is a subjective one. This has something to do with our being human. For Filipinos, spirituality is not merely engaging ourselves to different religion. Spirituality would be a subjective feeling we experience, an elevation of who we are. That's according to Yapot as he defines spirituality. So among adolescents, here's another theory about spirituality. So this is by Fowler. Fowler. So renewal of faith as one ages. So he would say that in syn synthetic conventional stage, since the adolescent like you can already think operationally, meaning you could now give ideas to what you see and you're experiencing stable community, stable identity, I should say, wherein you are now trying to identify what you believe in, what would be a source of knowledge for you, the values that you have. But at the stage of faith development or spirituality development, you're still leaning towards an authority. It could be your parents who would educate you about the religious organization that you have to follow or the religious beliefs that you have to follow. So that's for, um, for adolescents, the first stage. For the second stage would be the individuative or reflective stage, meaning this is the beginning of questioning of our religion. Sometimes in a family, if the child would now become adolescent, they would question life. They may be influenced by their, uh, by their peers. That's why they join different organizations. They do not merely follow the rituals, but they question the rituals. Okay? When an um, individual questions the ritual, he's already in this particular stage. The rituals may no longer be something which is done because it's had been, it had been done previously, but it should be done because it has a purpose. So that would be the idea. Okay. So another individual who focused on spirituality would be Viktor Frankl. So Viktor Frankl, in his logotherapy, logo believes that spirituality could deal with our relationship with other people. Spirituality will not be only about having uh, doing things because your religion tells you so, but it's more of the action, the deeds, and the work. Or in his case, Viktor Frankl, Frankl Meillion, deals with the suffering, that despite the suffering that he had experienced, he's always able to find meaning in life. Okay, like our parents, they find meaning to their children. Okay, clear. Like the social workers or some people who volunteer to do work for the less fortunate, that is the meaning of life. Or sometimes when we talk about martyrs, saints, or even heroes, they die for other people. They suffer for other people. That's the meaning of life. Okay, so maybe if you would like Additional, so again, you additional. If you would like, if you're familiar with Basilius Lord Patawad song, then you could listen to it and then you could ponder what are some what does the song mean to you if it has any relevance. So it depends. Okay, next the political self. The political self would focus on an increasing awareness of the deeply dysfunctional and diverse uh, di uh, div diversity uh, divisive divisive nature of many of our traditional political, political and economic institutions. This is very timely since we will be moving towards election period. So political self, trying to become aware of what is happening in our country, particularly in politics, in issues about corruption, poverty, illegal drugs. Not that we're trying to become part of a certain political organization, like, for example, you become part of the BBM, a BBM, Bongbong Marcos, or the DDS, Lindong Dante Squad, no, uh, Duterte supporters, Lindong Duterte supporters, 
or the Lenny Robredo pink movement, those different things. We are not trying to categorize you as such, but what we would like you to explore in your political self is your awareness of these issues and how it affects you as an individual. Okay, so in the comment section, can you write your idea about this different issue? Just choose one. For example, what is vaccine hesitancy? Vaccine hesitancy is uh, the scenario wherein people do not like to be vaccinated of COVID vaccines because they may turn into zombies, those things. So why is there vaccine hesitancy? Poverty. You could also place there, uh, ano pa bang, ano natin? Uh, ayuda, those would be some things. So share to us, what do you know about this political issue, how it affects our country, our economy? As a student, how can you help the society focus on these different issues? Okay, so you could place your answer for question number six. Next, the digital self. So for the digital self, a field in psychology we call cyber psychology would focus on how we interact with others using technology, how our behavior is influenced by technology, how technology should, this is a mass, should be developed to best suit our needs, not technology defining what we need, and how psychological states can be affected by technology. This is one of the exciting parts of the unpackaging the self because all of us are affected by technology. Okay, so how do we interact with others using technology? So for some of us, usually we make use of Facebook. Facebook would be one of the most popular compared to Viber. Parang kukunti na lang yata ang Viber. Yahoo Messenger, I don't know if you, if you know this, but we had this when we were in college. Skype, still do Skype. I still so my account for Tinder is no longer present. But most of us do this Facebook Messenger. Okay. So for Facebook Messenger, how do we interact? What is Facebook for us? Why is it that we have to create group GC, group uh, GC, group chat? Why is there a certain group chat for only this type of friends? Try to see how we interact with others because of this different technology. Okay. Another thing that you have to see would be how our behavior is influenced by our technology. So uh, some of the people would be into mobile games. Hmm. Dati Pokemon Go lang ang ginagawa. Hinahanap lang yung mga Pokemon, ay mga, ano bang tawag doon? Yung mga characters sa Pokemon or virtual. Now people are seated in eating together but they are individually playing with each other. Sometimes nga at home, you do not talk to the person, you just send a message. So sometimes our technology, the technology that we use, influence our behavior. That when we were little, when we are gathered in front of the mesa for us to eat, diba? pagkakain na, no gadget. But now you see people, they play with the gadget while they are eating. Okay. So how technology can best can be developed in to best suit our needs. Like for example, as a sa Nueva Vizcaya, we have the padayon, the carabay, sa Manila kasi lasa, uh, grab. Or you have online banking, the Google, the torrent, there's still torrent. Ito yung illegal <laughs> website na kung saan nakaka-download ka ng mga movies and different application. Lazada, Antocart, or even TikTok. So how would these things help us fulfill our needs? They, they are very helpful at the moment, especially during this pandemic. So how our psychological states can be affected by technology? Sometimes people would say, ah, mas in kami pag tayo ay nasa Instagram lang. In my case, Instagram is used for stalking celebrities. Ang mga friends ko sa Instagram, celebrities. Ang mga friends ko sa Twitter, mga sudyante, although I do not have some friends, uh, students, acquaintances, colleagues. Pag Twitter naman, the organizations that I follow. So the state, or even for Spotify, Spotify would be 
more of a certain venue where I could choose the music. YouTube would be a place where I learn. So the, the psychological state is affected by our technology. We have different preferences. We have different group of friends for this different application. Okay. So cyber psychology would tell us that we focus on social media and the World Wide Web because online and offline gaming could influence how we communicate with other people. Mobile commute, computing could also influence artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality. This particular session, online learning, is another means of how technology had shaped who we are, particularly our education. Okay. So in the digital world, there are 7 million people in the world. 4.21 million are internet users. 3.196 million are active in their different social media accounts. 5.135 million people have their own mobile accounts. number. And these from 5.135 million individuals, 2. 0.958 from it are active in mobile social users. So you just see how our life had been changed because of this technology. And in the Philippines, then and in the world, the most at uh, the country wherein most people spend their time in social media would be the Filipinos. Hindi mo na nga kailangan magbasa ng newspaper, punta ka lang ng Facebook, marami kang malalaman. Marami ding maritis. Mari test. Mari anong latest sa Facebook. Doon ko rin makakanap ng video. Okay. So, these are some of the different things you see how technology had influenced our life. Okay. So, the total population of 105 in the Philippines, 105 million, 0.7 million Filipinas, 67.0 are internet users. And these internet users are also active in their social media accounts. Mm -hmm. And it's right, just see, 121.4 million, meaning mas malaki pa dun sa total population natin, ang may mobile subscription. Ibig sabihin yan, one individual may have more than one mobile number. So that's how technology had influenced our life. So what does this tell us about our self and identity? Now, our concept of who we are, remember, the actual self, the ideal self that we had discussed in the psychological perspective, is now influenced by our online world and our online anonymity. What does, that, what does anonymity mean? This would be a mass. This would be anonymous, meaning we are not known online. We do not share really the real, we do not share the real self, the, the real, who we are, okay? So when we talk about ourself, sometimes there are different persona that we use. For example, if you would like to brag in social media, do not upload pictures that shows you that you are just staying at home. But instead, you brag, you use pictures in order to show that you have been to these different places, eating this different food. Nagigets niya? Sometimes, relationship would foster in social media. So those would be different things. Okay. Um, here are some of the online behavior theories. Though I'll, let's, let's just move it into passing. So equalization hypothesis would deal with the removal of social cues, a reduction of a of associated stereotypes may occur and therefore may lead to increased social power in the online world. Meaning, for example, if you're a seller, you could make your environment pleasing to your customer, maybe by using some background, by using some, some music. Or social identity model of the individualization effect theory, the importance of social situation that could influence our use of social media. Okay. 
Okay. What I would like to emphasize here would be impression management. Sometimes in social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram, Instamag, kung meron pa yung Instamag, we try to define the persona that we reflect in our social media. Like for example, if you would like to reflect a person who is happy, then most of your posts would deal with happy occasions. Wala yung bashing. If you would like to give an impression that you're a supporter of Bongbong Marcos, okay, yeah, Duterte, di kong Duterte, DDS ka, then you try to upload some of those different things. So our image in the social media is formed by what we post in our different accounts. Okay, so for example, if you, if you would like to appear to be mayaman, then you keep on picture, uh, track, taking, taking pictures of possessions that would that are of high value, okay? So there are different types, different types of privacy, reserve, isolation, intimacy with family, intimacy with friends, solitude, and anonymity. Usually, when everything is already posted in the Facebook, usually some people would say, it's a privilege to be turning off your cell phone, not trying to communicate through social media. That is isolation. Or you do not share personal experiences. Do not say, ah, I'll be going to Baguio. Baka manakawan ka pag walang matitira sa inyo. And only few people who really matter should be part of your social group. Okay, so those would be sometimes. Okay. Next, anonymity. Why is it that in social media, we are not afraid to share our ideas because of this anonymity? Meaning, people do not know who you really are. Or you could just get a certain identity of an individual and make it your own. Even the impression that we give, it's anonymous. Okay, so that would be anonymity. Okay, here are some of the things that I would like you to remember. Your impression, your take home as we end this social as digital self. So be responsible in using social media. Setting boundaries on your online self would be one way. So what would be some of the things that you have to remember? Is this pause the story necessary? Is there a real benefit to this pause? Is it funny, warm-hearted, teachable? Or am I just making noise online without purpose? Okay, clear. So when you pause, sabi nga, think before, before, think before you click. So, try to see. May idudulot bang maganda? Kung stress na yung mga friends mo, maglalagay ka pa ng pang-garant doon, pang-lalait, pang would that be helpful for others? Okay. Next. Setting smart boundaries. So, guide questions to consider before posting. Have we, as a family or mother-child, resolved this issue? Nangyari, ayaw mo makialam si na Marites, si mga kapitbahay mong walang malagawa, kundi alamin kung anong latest. Huwag kang mag-share ng problema ninyo sa pamilya sa Facebook page. Do not wash your dirty laundry in public like most artista. Hindi pa tayo artista. When we become artists, but do not do it. Okay? So those different things. So sometimes we may share a funny joke, we may laugh at something, but try to see. Will this seem as funny in 5, 10, or 15 years from now? Maybe you could share some quotes of Miriam Defensor Sanchaga that even though she passed away, she gave us good hear it taglines. Those could be ways posts that we should be doing. Okay. Be a good web citizen. So proper stick to safer sites. Huwag mag-click ng mag-click, mamaya iba na yung pinupuntahan nyo. Try to change your password or don't share your passwords. Usually, mga boyfriend, girlfriends, they share their passwords. That's pa nag-break na doon na ilalabas yung si baho ng isa. Limit what you share. You share only what you want to share because it makes people happy. You're able to um, advocate what you believe in. Do not be mean or try to embarrass other people online. Be choosy about your online friends. Huwag lang add ng add. Okay? And be patient. Okay? 
Because of this dependency to computer and technology, even the screen, now uh, some psychologists are proposing another disorder called screen dependency disorder. Na para bang katatapos mo lang mag-Facebook, hindi ka makatiis, wala kang magawa, tingnan mo naman yung Twitter mo. O kaya manood ng YouTube channel. Okay, those could be things that we could not stop looking at our screen. So our advice is every after hour, isang oras ka nag aral try to stand up, stretch, see your surrounding, hawakan si bantay, yung mga aso, yung mga pusa. That could be a way of going away, a way to move away from your gadget or from the screen. And last question as we end this particular discussion. Question number seven. Do you think that people are different in the online world compared to the offline world? Should anonymity exist in the online world? Is impression management simply a nicer way of saying people are lying? So these are the different questions we have to put. Okay, thank you very much, students.